Rob Gaza. Hi, how are you? I'm doing fantastic. How are you doing? Good, good. Thank you so much for for joining me today and and uh, coming on board on on uh, the podcast. I know your your, your schedule's um, quite quite intense at the moment. You've just come mm-hmm. back from um, Yemen, and yeah, okay. yeah. Tell me, yeah, I came back. I uh, was on a trip with the World Food Program and uh, was over in Yemen for about five days. And uh, prior to that, I was in Cairo and Istanbul interviewing musicians and mm-hmm. refugees and talking about you know the 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 changes that happen over there and how you know the, the suppression of art and music and things like that and and, and film and theater mm. and uh, really kind of getting to learn what's going on over there this is why I, I wanted to chat with you today i wanted to to dive straight into this i wanted to learn more about this whole project um like the your inspiration for working with um, the uh, World Food Food Program and working with the UN, how that's been, um, and how yeah, how this whole experience has has sort of unfolded for you, and and when did it start? Like when did this journey start? Well, you know, if you really go back, the journey started a long time ago when there was that tsunami in Thailand. I knew some people at WFP. I wanted to know if we wanted to get involved and do anything. So we right. did a fundraiser at the 930 Club. And from then, I've gone to do a few projects, you know, whether it's raising money or creating awareness. I traveled to Southern Sudan with them at one point um, to basically did a little uh, documentary thing on what was happening over there ages ago. And then... Uh, went to Nepal with Richard Reagan and, uh, you know, took a, flew around in an old Russian helicopter around uh, some monasteries and places that were hard to get to, mm. um, especially when the weather was bad. Um, and, you know, just seeing all the different projects that they have. And uh, we did something where we raised the money for this Nuari tribe, uh, this tribe of uh, these women from this tribe who were young and they wanted to scale Mount Everest and uh, we raised some money for them so that they could accomplish their goal. Your history with, um, with the UN uh, World Food Program is now almost 20 years, 20 years now, it seems. Yeah, mm. yeah. And so I hadn't done anything for a while. Um, uh, had a son and just busy on a lot of fronts that way. And um, also, you know, I reached out to Richard Reagan about, you know, doing something in the future and then the pandemic happened. So that sort of uh, threw a monkey wrench in our plans for a few years. And then, so, you know, at the time he was in Bangladesh and uh, now he was, uh, you know, he's in Yemen and he's like, uh, do you want to come over and see what we're doing? And I was like, sure. And we're, you know, the whole inspiration was like, you know, what can we do? You know, and I think it's kind of like, with my skill set, with what he's doing, what can you sort of bring together and what can happen? So we thought about like, let's do something that incorporates music and art and we bring a face to what's happening over there because a lot of people, they hear Yemen and they just think, you know, famine or starving children or war and things mm. like that. And they really have no sort of cultural context on, you know, the, the people actually there and what what life is like and what what is happening. So I think we wanted to just kind of tell a story in some way. So, you know, went over there, was talking to musicians and uh, we actually collaborated on some tracks. And so I'm going to be uh, putting those out as well with these musicians. And, um, you know, the stories that I heard were just pretty amazing. You know, this one uh, young kid play, started a school for children uh, yeah, doing music. And they arrested him and, you know, there's a lot of threats to his life and things like that. And, uh, you know, it's pretty cool to uh, collaborate on music. And then I was out at a festival recently in Mexico and playing a song that we did together. And it's wild how you can take something from halfway around the world and then play it to people and people are dancing. And, you know, here's a culture that's suppressing dancing and Mm. things like that. It's kind of mind blowing in a way. These projects, yeah, I, I, the, the whole from from the conception of of um, you know the the idea of working with all these different uh, food program projects that you've done um, yeah tell me about the how like 
what are the the, the types of pro- like the projects that you actually put together where you're bringing in music and 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 trying to br- raise awareness? How do these? What uh, Tommy walk through a project and and how that is doing so? Like how is how is such a project in such uh, bringing bringing these uh, bringing awareness from from making you know bringing the artists together bring bringing out a release what's the release you know what what are what are the releases are you putting together have you put together all these different types of uh albums or compilations um i'd love to hear more about that yeah well i think the idea was to do uh like sort of a uh six seven song uh you know digital release um you know, and so we had someone over there who works with the Yemeni community and especially, you know, you, you know, there's not really an avenue to do music in Yemen, uh, um, you know, unless it's like religious or military, militarily oriented. Um, so we met people outside of Yemen and we, we had this uh, incredible woman, Nadwa, who was tight with, you know, just the Yemeni community in these different countries. And she introduced us to a lot of these different artists. We went and talked to them. Um, the idea was to collaborate and do, and do music. So I created some sketches, uh, some musical sketches, some ideas and, and things yeah. like that and went into the studio with them. And, uh, we were about, we were with about five or six different artists and just, you know, recording them on these different, uh, you know, musical ideas and then. I basically am developing them and then, you know, putting them out and doing a, a, a release, you know, in coordination with the World Food Program. And are you releasing that through 18th Street Lounge or is that? Um, no, so yeah. I, have, I have my own label, Magnetic Moon, but, you know, okay. I think that the idea would be to, you know, raise awareness and, you know, get uh, the, you know, get proceeds going to them. So. Got it. Right. So, for, so from the the sales of of the the um, releases, fun the funds the funds then go back to the the world the, the world f- uh, food program. World food program are the artists as well. Oh, the so, artists, you know, of course, just, right? Yeah, 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 figuring out the splits. So, um, yeah, that's the the idea. Yeah, I'm curious because I'd love to l- like, and and also for for listeners to to learn about how they like individually can create their own type of contribution type projects and how those models work and right. how they can um be sustainable and for all the all the, the contributors and and that you know as a, as a as a business model you know and and that's what I was where I was sort of going with this I wanted to sort of share more insight on that yeah, well, you know, I think one of the biggest sort of questions, you know, we all have is what can we do? Mm. Um, you know, when it comes to, to uh, you know, making the world a better place or kind of just contributing in general. And, mm. you know, we were fortunate because we do music and people asked us to get involved in things. And we're from Washington, D.C. and we've been very, you know, politically and socially conscious. And so, um, you know, a lot of it is just is figuring out like what what can you bring personally like one of the things i can do is music and raise awareness and talk you know about what's happening in different parts of the world and things like that Mm -hmm. and so um using your skill set and using your relationships with people you know who are doing things you know and i think that's sort of you know one of the best places to start because i mean to be honest, when we started this, we didn't really know what we were going to do at all. And as we went, this story just kept evolving and we kept hearing more great stories and hearing great musicians. And mm. we met with a Nobel Prize winner um, there in Istanbul, the, the only Arab lady uh, to win the Nobel Prize. And, uh, mm-hmm. you know, that was, yeah, it was pretty, uh, you know, amazing just to to meet all these people and find out about this culture that's rich in history and culture and tradition and Mm. food and um it was very eye-opening and you know it's a trip that uh i'll never forget but you know it's like one of the things that i think people take 
away with them, you know, when they're either repressed or they're fleeing or whatever, is they still take the, the music and the songs of their people, you know, and mm. it's great to contribute to that. I noticed like you, before actually heading to, to Yemen, you made trips to- and you mentioned this earlier as well that you made trips to Cairo and and to um, uh, Istanbul. Yes. How were there? Did you you did some recordings in those cities and then also in Yemen as well? Yeah. So we did some uh, recordings in Istanbul. I had a uh, friend of a friend who had a studio there, so we amazing invited some uh, singers to come with us and. Uh, we had a, a couple sessions there, and then in Egypt, we also did a couple sessions with some other uh, refugees from uh, from Yemen there as well. And mm. that was another cool recording studio. And it's nice to actually go to different places, and you know, not just be in the sort of mix of the city, but just you know, when you kind of go into the studios and you're with musicians and you're hearing stories and you're you know, just uh, there's a lot of magic that happens. And, you know, just that sort of camaraderie of, uh, you know, really feeling, you know, uh, that sort of uh, creative spirit was really special, you know. Was it hard to hard to coordinate those those sessions like in, in lead up, bef- like with the lead time and how much lead time was there to, to prepare for the for these sessions before heading over? We had a, about a month lead time and, you know, we had a pool of musicians. So Nadwa was very instrumental in finding the musicians there and who was available. We also met mm. with an actress, this woman, her name is Sally. I- get her last name but uh she has, she's in this movie 10 days before the wedding which is one of the only pieces of cinema coming out of yemen in like the past 10 years and uh you know we went and spent time with her and her family and so we had this pool of people and some people were available and they weren't and uh you know it was quite the journey to you know meet them kind of you know they really sort of uh, took us in you know it was me and there was a group of people that were with me some people from the world food program nadwa and uh, a couple cameramen and things like that and uh you know we really just sort of got uh, really immersed in the whole experience and it was just really beautiful we went to a lot of yemeni restaurants and really learned a lot about the the history and, and what's happening there. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I just, I mean, I've been to Egypt a few times. I, did, I love that city, um, yeah. to, to Cairo. It's, uh, yeah. did you, did you get to spend a, a few, a, like a, a bit of time there? How many days were you in Cairo? We were in Cairo for a week. So we got the right. nice little. Nice. Yeah. It's, it's a great city. You know, yeah. I really enjoyed it. And, and uh, thievery, we played a festival this past summer. So right I made a few, I made a few contacts there. So when I was in Cairo, it was great because I reached out to them and, right. you know, went to some c- cool restaurants and great little spots as well. And so, um, yeah, you know, just the, the, the history of that city and, you know. Yeah. It goes yeah. Through, is that, so, is, is, so this is your second, second trip? Yeah. With my second trip this in year, like yeah. uh, four months or something. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah, it's a great town. Um, I um, yeah, I've I've gone. I've actually gone there for for work um, mostly for, as well for music and and uh, I've also had the the, uh, the the chance to work with some musicians as well. And um, wow. yeah, it was great. Um, we did a we did a like a, a film score for um, and shout out to Cinema Kill in Dubai for for, for setting oh. this up. We did a film score for. Um, uh metropolis the old the 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 um and with with arabic music which was really oh, wow. cool yeah yeah and we, did really it, and, cool. we, and we did it live in dubai so it, it was uh it was pretty cool <laughs> yes that's amazing yeah and so you were there how long um on on that trip was only almost a week as well i and we we um and we we had like six weeks to put this score together um and uh you know we just they they, they sent us down uh to, to from dubai myself and a, and a producer Tariq omar and we we head down there and we um uh met the musicians for the first time and started to to, to put this score together um and it, yeah it was super fun um 
it, 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 very intense, but it was super, uh, super fun. The traffic is pretty crazy there. <laughs> oh, that too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm. I remember like, you know, just getting out of the airport and, and, um, and heading, heading straight to the, to meet with everyone. And, uh, I, I, that, that trip, I, I mean, I was just so like amazed by everything, like just everything, the whole environment, just seeing everything, the buildings, the, just the, the, the bustle, the hustle yeah. and bustle. It was just, it's just amazing. Did, did yes, you manage sensory, to get it? Sensory, it's the, pretty. The sensory uh, overload, exactly. Yeah, yeah <laughs> did, definitely. Did you, did you get a, a chance to have a ride on the Nile? Do the tourist thing? We did. Yes, <laughs> yeah. we did. We, uh, you know, we, uh, we actually did, uh, we didn't do the tourist thing. What we did is we went out and we did interviews on the Nile. So we interviewed mm. some of these, uh, you know, we interviewed uh, Stally, the actress on the Nile. The first night we got there, we kind of wanted to get out and just sort of, uh, you know, film someplace besides the hotel lobby, <laughs> you know, where we were kind of like, <laughs> we arrived the first night and we didn't, we were like, let's just, you know, get on a boat and go cruising down the Nile. And yeah, it was a pretty magical uh, experience. So the the release uh, for for the, the the Yemen project when um, have you got a release date yet for this? Or is it too early? No. So uh, well, it's still too early. I'm probably about two or three songs in out of probably about six. So mm -hmm. I'm looking probably sometime in the spring is what I'm thinking. Spring, late spring. Okay, and it's yeah. and it's a it's a it's a um, more more or less like an an EP type thing, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I was going to say like an EP, but a lot of people, when I tell them EP, they have no idea what I'm talking about. <laughs> to explain an LP, a 45 <laughs> single, and then, you know, so, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah I was going to say EP at the beginning, but I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> the, the audience might be like, what is he talking about? You know? Yeah, yeah, I, I think, um, look, you know, it's, it, it, it is certain, it, like, it's still kind of common, uh, but people still using that term today, so, yeah, but, but. But yes, you're right. There, there, there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> some people don't, don't get it. Um, well, the like, new yeah, I, asked, I asked my 12 year old son. I'm like, do you know what hang up the phone means? Where we say that? He's like, I have no idea. He's like, <laughs> not actually hanging up anything. So it's like, it's yeah, like, yeah, it doesn't make right. any sense to them, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there's, there's a little nuances that we. Uh, yeah. It's the times have changed for sure. <laughs> for sure, yeah. <laughs> um and and uh, you met, you mentioned that you you were there in the summer for for a, a show um which festival mm -hmm. was that for in Cairo Oh Was that part of the Nacelle group the Nacelle the It was up in the north it was uh, uh -huh. like to the west of Cairo Okay uh, Oh it's called like Shoreline Festival it had some very western name short sure. Okay. So they had a, they had a lot of like cool great artists. Yeah. And uh became friends with the promoters there. Right. And I mean the the water up there is like it's like in the Caribbean. I mean Yeah, you know, yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah. Clear, you swim, you see your own shadow on the bottom. Was that in Guna? Of, Guna? No, it's called Jazz. Okay. Uh Al Jazz something um But yeah, I mean it's a, a really beautiful part of the world. Okay. Okay. And, Amazing. Uh, yeah, I mean, we finished the European tour, and so uh, we parked the band there for a week, and everybody was really happy just, you know, being on the Egyptian coast in the mm. summertime, and the water was really beautiful, and the people Excellent. were great, and, you know, yeah. and they had some great bands there, too, as well, so. And when did, when did, you, when did you start, with, and you and the band start touring again since, since the pandemic? Is, was this your first summer, of, um, you know, after last year, and... No, we actually started um, summer of 21. We went out. We did mm. some shows in uh, some places like uh, Denver. We did a, one in, in Colorado in general. We did a bunch of shows. And then we did a bunch of shows in Florida as well because they didn't really have the the mask mandates and everything. And, mm. and uh, mm. so, but I mean... You know, when we came out of the pandemic and doing those shows, I mean, they were just like, you know, just kind of real emotional because the audience was so excited to see live music again. Yeah. And, yeah. and the band, I mean, we were just really, 
you know, floored to be doing it again because, you know, you got to the point where like, are we ever going to do this again? Or what's, mm. what's going to happen? Mm. You know, and, and it's, uh, that was uh, a really incredible experience to feel that sort of electricity from everybody wanting to see music again. Mm. Um, you know, now I think after the pandemic, we said yes to a lot of touring and now I'm kind of ready to not do as much. <laughs> I, th I think we got, I think we got spoiled during the pandemic of, you know, I've been touring since I was, uh, 25 and it's like 27 years ago. And, wow. uh, and it was nice to have a couple of years off where like, oh, I can develop routines and yeah, work out yeah. and whatever. Yeah. I think that's what, I think that's what we've kind of, um, seen, you know, through that pause was, um, you know, another spectrum or another sort of, you know, um, it just sort of get another dimension of our of our existence. Our, uh, you know, we we we're able to kind of like um, review and reflect, and and I think that um, it it get you know, which sort of then re reevaluate our values and our priorities, and and um, and we can I get, we we can get on and do what we what we did before, but. Um, now it's sort of like coming from a different lens, you know, that matches yeah. these new, these new, these new values, you know, these new priorities, right? Yeah. So, mm, I, 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 this morning I, I was listening to um, Richest, Richest Man in Babylon and I noticed that it was um, while I was at the gym before, <laughs> before yeah. uh, coming to speak to you today. So I was just like, and I noticed that it's coming up for the 20 year anniversary. Yeah, Next what year? did it come out? Two thousand and three. Two thousand and three. Wow, <laughs> that's crazy. That's so you know. I mean, it is wild that we've been doing it for this long. You know, it's, mm. it's sometimes I'm really you know I'm surprised myself. You know, it's like twenty seven years is like I feel like in a band. You know, it's kind of like dog years. You know, we might as well have <laughs> been together for like a hundred years or something because bands don't usually last uh, too long. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, tell me what what would you say have been some of the um the 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 secrets that have kept you guys moving together so long? Has it been has there been any kind of things that you could share that have helped keep the band together and and the vision and the mission? Well, well I think you know that uh you know we always respected each other you know as uh, friends and artists uh making the music and creating and you know really having appreciation for the way you know me and erica's partners the way that we you know listen to music and our, our thoughts about it and things like that and so it's been very like uh, you know working together creatively has always been very easy mm. you know um and you know with the live band that's uh sort of another element that, that's very you know we're very different than other like electronic acts in the sense that we're out there sometimes between 10 to 15 people on stage you know and um that can be hard to keep together sometimes because that's like a circus sometimes and when you're tra traveling on the road it's just like you know it's, it can be like a, a madhouse um and uh you know, I think, uh, the, you know, a lot of this is just, you know, the fuel has been the music, just always, you know, putting out uh, music we love. And um, and with the live thing, it's like a family, you know, at this point. Mm -hmm. You know, some of us have been touring together for 20 years. You know, mm -hmm. so. so what would be the, like, in terms of um, built, like, you know, you're obviously you're developing some sort of, you know, long-term kind of relationship with people and, and with, the, with the, I guess it becomes some, you know, your family almost, you know, like the people that you're working with, you're developing. Uh -huh. um, and, and obviously there's, there's, there's turbulence along the way and, and there's things that, you know, um, yeah, I, I, what are some of the things that how, you know, you guys sort of keep it together? you know, after, after so long, you know, and, and what would you uh, say would be a, a thing that you guys do? <laughs> yeah. Well, I think, you know, this, uh, 
it really comes down to respect for what we do and a respect for each other. You know, mm. I think that's kind of like, you know, and you, you have to do it because you love it, you know, and, and everyone's there and they, they really, you know, you're living on buses and things together and the, ba- you know, the green rooms and things like that. It's kind of like, yeah, and you kind of have to know when to sort of back off if there's any like sort of friction <laughs> and kind of let things sort of the situations <laughs> diffuse a bit because, you know, there's been some, you know, sometimes have been pretty tense. Yeah. You know, but I think it kind of really comes down to that and just, you know, and having an extra layer of patience or if you're not, you know, happy with something, being able to also kind of like, you know, maybe remove yourself in a healthy way or something, you know. Mm -hmm. So and you know, and there's a lot of uh just the camaraderie and love like we you know love to go out to bars together afterwards and celebrate you know having performed a great show as well mm. so mm. I, I i i mean i remember um you know in the 90s uh late 90s and early 2000s just being um you know just such a fan of um uh 18 street lounge you know and and that the um and I, you know, I was just always um, heard about the 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 the, cl- the place, you know. In, yeah. In, in Have, did you ever go? No, I've never been. I've never uh-huh. been. Uh, and and um, hopefully, I get to make it one day. Is it still is it still running again? Or is it open again now? Or they opened one of the partners. Reed opened another uh, variation of that in mm. DC. The original space is, uh, I think, owned by someone else now. But I mean, at the time, it was legendary. There was no place on the globe like that. Place. That's right. I mean, it was uh, mm. dedicated to that form of music. There was jazz. There was reggae. There was bossa nova. Um, mm-hmm. You know, and it was really, and of course, trip hop and you know, lots of uh, down tempo beats as well. So, I mean, that you know, I, I've traveled around the world and never seen a place like that, and it was just beautiful to have that dedication to that type of music mm. well it, it and 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 you had and that was the label too like a, the, the label that um you know you had all these amazing yeah. artists on there the roster was incredible the releases were incredible uh are there are there plans to continue that that um you know that that plan or we're not really doing the label anymore. I mean, we stopped that years ago. Um, right. You know, especially when things came into sort of the, the streaming world and mm. things like that. It was kind of like that was sort of a rough transition. And, mm. you know, I don't think our heart was into being a label for other artists at that point. Mm. But, you know, when we started, it, it came out of the 18th Street Lounge and our studio was in the liquor room, you know. And you would have like these distributors coming through with their bottles of wine. And trying to get people to buy and we just you know buy by <laughs> like 5 30 we'd be trashed you know and just like everybody would be coming from the club into like oh what are you guys working on and bringing us drinks you know it's just like i mean it was pretty sloppy but it was a lot of fun <laughs> so uh awesome so and and and, and now gaza project um you mm-hmm. you know that you um uh i think it started in 2020 Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Is that was that at the was that on um a, something that sort of came from the pandemic or or was it something that was in the works pre pre pandemic? Sort of was it in the works pre pandemic, and um you know and then all of a sudden there was uh we did a tour in the United States and I think it was uh probably a lot of friends I know it was the last shows that they ever saw before the pandemic happened and you know we stopped. 28th and i think here in san francisco they closed down like the the next week and uh you know we were ready to do some more touring and stuff like that but yeah i mean the project came out of just like you know i love like a lot of new wave sort of uh things going back to new york in the late 70s or mm. 80s and, and and things like that and taking sort of what i think of as pop from my day not like you know pop today or anything like that mm-hmm. we're working with different singers a lot of younger artists and collaborating and it was just uh a nice uh 
you know, it, it, I always compare like when you do music all the time, it's kind of like sitting in the hot tub too long. You know, you want to get out and take a cold plunge and just, you know, mix it up a bit and, and, yeah. and get back uh, in at some point. So, um, yeah, so I just really, you know, just love having a lot of different experiences with music. Um, you know, I did a one time I did a punk project, punk psych project with Brendan Lynch, who produced like Paul Primal Scream, Paul Weller, amazing, all these bands, and um, I did that in London. You know, and, like this going to Yemen and working with musicians that way, and then I'm doing this other thing that's kind of like you know more pop or whatever, and then there's thievery. So, you know, I just love exploring. It's, it basically. sounds like you're 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 tapping into. A whole ver- like your whole musical palette right there, you know. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I, need a, I need a country album now or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh um, gosh, yeah. <laughs> have, have, have you got? Have you got a, a um? What what? Uh, as far as Gaza, Gaza, the solo project now. What mm-hmm. what's on the horizon that uh, come? You know, something for us to look forward to. Yeah, so I have uh, some music that just came out in the past few months and i have some uh, new music uh, i have a track with lulu from thievery actually coming out pretty soon and um there's another ep <laughs> coming out uh, <laughs> as well uh yeah so i'm just you know constantly working on all sorts of fronts is it is it more club focused like because is there a bit more sort of a club kind of vibe going on here there's some different mixes that kind of lend themselves to remixes for clubs, mm-hmm. but this is kind of like more like songs for like, you know, the, the sake of, of making like these, these cool songs or whatever. Um, I was doing like a, a bunch of music before that was just more sort of deep tech house, things mm-hmm. like that, or organic house. And so I'm, still doing those types of remixes and things as well, even for this project, you know, right. so right and now that, it just through, seems like, you know, through the Gaza project. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, um, yeah, through my own label magnetic moon. And so, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. And I feel like, you know, with the technology today, you know, you can take a song and you can really, you know, I'll do my own different remixes of them in different styles and stuff. And it's fun to, to play around. Mm hmm. Mm. Yeah. Do you do you do you find it difficult to to um, I mean obviously it, uh, you know being um, over time you've because you have so many different projects ha- um, going on and do you find it difficult to 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 manage them like in you know like being able to streamline them and obviously you obviously have an amazing team and good people working around you and supporting but yeah uh-huh. that that's obviously taken time as well to develop. Um, that that uh, you know um, team and structure and stuff you know mm-hmm. and yeah tell me a bit about that yeah well you know I feel like I have a great team around me like really good support you know I really love working with the people that I that I'm working with and uh, you know when it comes to these projects and stuff I just kind of like you know like this past year I'm like okay this is going to be a big thievery touring year year. so that was sort Mm -hmm. of like the main thing and then you know the music that came out on sort of you know the other my other stuff was just like sort of secondary to that um you know and i really kind of like to think of it maybe like six month six month chunks or you know two years or something and just you know um like next year you know there's gonna be a bunch of garza music coming out and uh uh, the world food program thing, which I'm, mm. you know, in the middle of. So Mm-mm. I'm pretty mm. stoked about the Yemen music coming out. Are there any, um, uh, artists that you have in mind that you'd like to be working with in the, for the Gaza project, uh, particularly? Good question. And just, you know, um, I've been working with a lot of just younger artists and people who I don't know, but I'm starting to think about, you know, kind of, uh, doing some other more hope high profile features. But, mm. you know, that list is still being put together. Yeah. 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 I, I mean, I, I was always, a, um, I always loved the, 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 the track with David Byrne and yeah. you mentioned, you know, before the whole um, uh, new wave uh, 
how was that working with David Byrne back then? Yeah, no, I mean, you know, he was uh, for me an idol sort of Absolutely. growing up. I mean, you know, I was just mm-hmm. like, uh, I remember, you know, just being a kid and hearing those records. I was like 12 years old and they changed my life, you know, his, mm-hmm. his music with the talking head. So finally being able to, you know, meet him, you know, was, it was amazing. He came down to our studio and hung out with us and, you know, I went out one night, you know, with him, taking him to bars and stuff. And he's just such an interesting person. You know, the whole time I was really starstruck. And, you know, <laughs> like another time he took me to, uh, uh, he invited me to, he was playing at this uh, big out, outdoor auditorium outside DC and, you know, I met his parents, you know, and he comes out in this big, like, uh, this dude, it looks like he has no skin. So you see his muscles and veins and it's really creepy looking, you know, and I'm hanging out with his mom and dad who live in Maryland where my parents live. I'm like, like, what do you, what do your parents think of all this? And he's like, he's like, my mom doesn't care. She just wants to know where the local Safeway is or whatever, which is a grocery store or whatever, you know, and his parents are just very down to earth. And he's like, so out there as an artist. It was pretty cool to, to <laughs> Get some hang time with him. He's like, Amazing. Yeah, just, he's a genius. Yeah. Yeah. I just saw his, his uh, Broadway show in New York, uh, American Utopia, mm. which is great. I took my son and, you know, introducing him now to his music. Mm. That was, that was mm. great. I, um, yeah, I think, you know, I, I, I was very fortunate too. I, I had um, all those records um, around me as a kid as well, thanks to my mom. You know, uh, my mom was a big Talking Heads fan and Brian Eno and, uh, you know, right. hearing. Um, and, and I remember hearing the, um, I think it's, uh, it goes, it goes the, the, um, the one with the, the Middle Eastern beats, the Middle Eastern vocalist um, tune with, 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 on Brian Eno. And I'm just thinking, mm-hmm. like, is, is this almost probably like one of the first ever tunes to kind of hear that kind of like electronic meets global world vibes, you know, like, and, and there was almost like an introduction to that. And then, and then there's this whole new world to after that, you know, um, I, I, I was just thinking the reason I brought up um, David Byrne, maybe this is something for you to explore again with Gaza project, you know, go right. back in there and, yeah. and do something with him again. I'd, I would love that, you know, yeah, that would be great. Yeah. Yeah. No, and we did another one with Wayne Coyne, you know, who uh, the, the Flaming Lips guys who, you know. Oh, wow. Huge fans. And yeah, I mean, that's the great thing about being a production duo is, you know, we can kind of work with whoever we want to and change the sound at any time. We're not, you know, four guys in jean jackets in a band, you know, with <laughs> guitars and, like, and that's our sound. You know, we can kind of explore anything. We want to explore, you know, whether it's uh, Afrobeat or, yeah, Brazilian, yeah. Bossa Nova or, you know, uh, Middle Eastern sounds, you know, we, we can. And that's that's what I love about being a producer. And, you know, you're mm. not really handcuffed by just, uh, you know, everyone mm-hmm. else. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Amazing. Um, yeah. A- amplified yoga. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. That, when did that start? Was that a, was that a, a thing that birthed from the pandemic and, and, um, and then morphed into – a whole project like yeah tell yeah me a bit about so that. it started during the pandemic and you know um a friend of mine approached me with this thing he's like oh do you want to dj with some different yoga teachers and things like that and i was like sure you know um as i get older you know health is definitely a little more on the radar i guess um and so i started doing it and you know there were people zooming in from all over the world and you know and this is more like uh there's no like traditional yoga poses or anything like that it's like very high energy it's like a lot of kundalini yoga principles and um it's very emotional for people i've had like a lot of friends like break down and cry and it's kind of like a uh, it's a beautiful way of sort of countering the 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 narrative that we get from society you Mm. know just kind of this materialist sort of um selfish things that we can live in you know these paradigms of like instagram and social media and this and that you know it's like it's a nice way of like kind of just even uh 
if it's therapeutic, it's, it, it's great. And, and, you know, it's really like, I've had people like, you know, ask me like, what, what are you doing? Do you, do you need money? Like, why are you doing this yoga thing? Whatever. <laughs> and, uh, you know, but it's like really <laughs> like, it's, it's really like, uh, uh, beautiful you know and donovan's a great teacher and like we you know been traveling to different parts of the world i was just in uh Correas, mexico and you know we've been to Tulum and Esalen, which is a big sort of uh spiritual um, training area i mean it's on the the, the big sur coast it's, it's gorgeous down there and so it's uh just something i really enjoy doing it's another way of exploring with music as well and, and mm. having a different connection with it. Well, it's, it sounds like a no-brainer, really. I mean, um, from understanding uh, and learning a bit more about, and, and I, I mean, it, even without this today's conversation, it's just like understanding about the ethos of you and 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 uh, uh, and and Thievery Corp. You know, it just it it kind of uh, you know yoga kind of resonates with that you know it's just like a sort of comes hand in hand I, I feel you know because of the it just seems you know like a a great marriage that kind of that music and and um and learning to you know because it is a you know it's a, it's a quite a you know a spiritual sound and and spiritual project and what you've been yeah. doing over the years and it kind of makes sense yeah <laughs> No, and that's what, the, you know, it was cool. Like, I was down in Mexico, and like I was saying earlier, you know, taking that kid's uh, flute song that we did together and playing it for something. And we were, I was DJing it during an amplified yoga session on a sunset session on a beach, and everybody just feeling <laughs> uplifted. And, you know, here's this kid who led a war and, you know, had to sell his flutes and is working in a bakery. And it's just about giving up doing music and to see all these people dancing in the sun, you know, yeah, sunset, the other yeah. side of the world was really, you know, kind of like uh, mm. maybe goosebumps. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. I was going to say goosebumps. And it's almost like a, this whole, you know, you, 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 you've almost, you know, you've seen that whole from, from the big, from the start of working with that kid and then seeing the narrative and what it, what it can actually yeah. do on the other <laughs> spectrum. Right. So cool. Yeah. Very cool. That's yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. Uh, and I noticed that there was um, something with Apple Music with, with, the, yep. with the Amplified Yoga. Um, why don't you uh, let the listeners know where they can – is that a playlist that's there now? Um, yeah, it's a playlist. It's a, a thievery playlist, and it's kind of similar to what I do with Amplified a little bit, um, you know, uh, but it's through fitness. So I think if you go on the Apple Music uh, app, or whatever, or even mm. on your watch, maybe. And if you go to fitness, and you can kind of scroll through, and oh, right, cool. And, uh, and, and there's a there's a playlist there for your workout or whatever you're doing. Right on. But it's pretty okay, cool. cool to yeah. Hey, I'm gonna get onto that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Very cool. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, well, it's been it's been great to um, you know, in lead up to today, I've been sort of just going down the. The uh, the the rabbit hole again of uh, Thievery Corp and even even hearing Lebanese Blonde again. It's just like it's just so great to hear all that music again and um, uh, you know sort of uh, you know go back into the in, into the catalog. Um, Rob, today thank you so much for for coming on board today. It's been an absolute pleasure and um, I'm I'm really um, honoured that you took took the time to to chat today. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's been great.